other guys made their way to the islands today. By other guys, I mean the Weber State football team arriving from Ogden, Utah for Saturday's game with the UH Warriors. Thing is, the other guys actually have a lot of us guys. Ten players from Hawaii are on the Wildcat roster. Here's a look at just a few of them. They include starting quarterback Cameron Higgins out of St. Louis, pass catcher Cody Nakamura of Baldwin, offensive lineman Lavaya Naihe of Kapa'a, and another former Crusader freshman D-lineman Ryan Eastman, whose D-line coach is former Baldwin headman Chad Kauha'aha'a. How you doing, everybody? Let's talk sports. This game thus creates a rare scenario. The starting quarterback on both sides will be a Hawaii high school product with Higgins for the Wildcats and Kahuku grad Inoke Funaki for UH. And to call it a mere coincidence would be undermining the value of Hawaii recruits in the eyes of these respective coaching staffs. And in the case of Weber State, head coach Ron McBride, who's reached into the island's pool of talent throughout his coaching career, which included a 13-year head coaching stop at Utah. I've got a lot of a lot of mileage out of those kids over the years, and, and uh, you know they play on Saturday, you know, and and, uh, and they they're natural for the game. I mean, it's just it's something that's natural to them, you know. I mean, they just they like contact, they like competition. He likes the Polynesian guys, the Hawaii, the Hawaii kids and stuff, and he just makes them feel feel at home and stuff like that. If guys don't really get a shot at UH or He's, he's there for you. Does it make it easier for a player from Hawaii when you go up there and you are surrounded by so many other Hawaii guys? Oh, yeah, it makes you not feel so homesick, you know, and you kind of still, you got a little Hawaiian family, you know, just, it's, it's good. I enjoy the, the players, you know, they're just, their families, their culture, the whole thing. And of course, part of local culture is the food. Waiting for the Wildcat players when they got off the bus at Aloha Stadium, 90 zip packs from Zippies. A welcome sight for the Hawaii guys, an adjustment, we'll call it, for the rest of the team. That was money. <laughs> Just, that's exactly what I was craving for on the plane. I was like, man, I hope we have Zippies for lunch. Coming in, I did not think I'd get off the bus and eat some cooked Spam, no. <laughs> man, if you want me to be serious, <laughs> wasn't what I was expecting. Maybe some pig or something like that, but not a, not a slice of Spam, no. <laughs> Those of us who are part Portuguese would say Mashfika, more for me. Weaver State is a Division I AA, also known as a football championship subdivision opponent. Kickoff is Saturday night at 6.05. Nobody can catch him. Touchdown. We're looking at him just as if they're as good as Florida, you know. We're not taking any team lightly right now. We need to come out and, and just execute and do everything we need to do to win the game. I hope you're all having a pleasant evening. Forget about Florida. That's been the talk around the UH football team this week as they prepare for their home opener against Weber State. Wildcats knocked out Montana Western 62-6 last week, and they arrived today with 10 local boys on their roster. You don't mind playing spoiler to those local boys on the Weber State team? I uh, definitely, you know, we got to let them know that, you know, just because they're coming back home, they get nothing still, you know. We definitely got to go out there and we got to just execute and give them nothing. You know, they're coming to play, and we know they have a lot of local guys, you know, that are going to come back, you know, come over here and try to, you know, try to win in front of, you know, their family. You know, there's like a, it's like a homecoming for them. So, you know, they're going to play their, they're gonna play their butts off, and, you know, we just got to be ready for them. And five days after their battle at the Swamp, Hawaii receiver Greg Salas is good to go. There was some doubt regarding his availability because he hurt his hand against the Gators. It's good, it's good. It's caught the balls today. It's getting better, though. What's actually wrong with it? Uh, I broke the fourth, I don't know, I don't know what it's called, it's in the back of my hand, uh, I broke one of the bones. Before the touchdown or after the touchdown? Yeah, in the first quarter. So you played the rest of the game after the first quarter with a broken right hand? Yeah, I mean, this is the biggest game I might ever play in, so I was definitely wasn't going to sit out in this one. Warriors only had 181 yards passing in their first game, just 60 yards on the ground, 240 yards of total offense team's worst output since 1999. UH's opponent this week, Weber State, has arrived. And to make sure that this trip remains all business, they are staying on the North Shore at Turtle Bay. Wildcats flew in around 3 o'clock this afternoon and then went straight to the Aloha Stadium for a scheduled practice. There's quite a connection between WSU and UH. Head coach Ron McBride actually hired Greg McMacken to be his defensive coordinator at Utah in the 90s. And McBride is also a big fan of Island players. He's been recruiting here since the 70s. Ten of this year's Wildcats are local boys. I'll tell you what, they, I've got a lot of 
a lot of mileage out of those kids over the years. And, and uh, you know, they play on Saturdays, you know, and, and uh, they're natural for the game. I mean, it's just it's something that's natural to them, you know. I mean, they just, they like contact, they like competition. They like they like to hit somebody. Uh, Coach Mack, you know he like he likes the Polynesian guys, the Hawaii, the Hawaii kids and stuff, and he just makes them feel feel at home and stuff like that. If guys don't really get a shot at UH, or he's just, he's there for you. As soon as the Wildcats got off the buses, they were directed to the boxes of bentos. Of course, the local boys were all for anything with rice. As for their mainland teammates, it all came as a bit of a surprise. But as you can see, all 80 bentos eventually disappeared. Were you kind of told early on that what you'd be uh, eating here? Um, no. I had no idea. Coming in, I did not think I'd get off the bus and eat some cooked Spam, no. <laughs> Maybe if you want to be serious. <laughs> wasn't what I was expecting. Maybe some pig or something like that, but not a, not a slice of Spam, no. <laughs> just don't eat too much. Just slow you down. After the game, then you can eat all you like. I think that's one of Hawaii's strategies, man. <laughs> At least he tried the spam, right? Kickoff for the first meeting between Hawaii and Weber State is 6.05 Saturday. Uh, now that the Wildcats have arrived, we'll go over more of the X's and O's with tomorrow's game preview. He's the former sports director here at KHNL and K5. And this Saturday, Russell Yamanoa will make his return to our airwaves as the new color analyst for University of Hawaii football games. He returns to the booth as the Warriors open up their home season with Weber State. So we took it upon ourselves to give him a bit of a warm-up and ask him to break down UH his home season opener. You watched the game in Florida. What kind of things do you think that you saw there that they really need to work on? Actually, you know, out of that Florida game, I don't think there's too much that they need to work on. I mean, Florida was just way faster. I think the one thing maybe they need to work on is settle on a quarterback. You know, Kifanaki gets to start this weekend, but uh, there's still a four-headed monster up there. On Saturday, the Warriors welcome in the Wildcats, and if history teaches us anything, the Warriors need to be prepared. In the last few years, Hawaii has not done, has not had the best of track records against 1AA competition. This is a team that comes to town, Weber State, with 10 guys from Hawaii on that roster. So. This is one of those that the Hawaii players cannot look past Weber State. And neither can the fans. Weber State's going to have some fans. Hawaii's going to have some fans. Uh, I think both sides need to show up and come up big because Hawaii's coming up two, counting the Sugar Bowl, a couple of blowout losses. They need all the positives they can get against Weber State. Russ believes the Warriors will get those positives too. Uh, my prediction, I, I, I said it on the radio this morning, 35-10 Hawaii. I'm giving them a touchdown and a field goal on the Weber State side, and I think Hawaii is good for five touchdowns. Now, Russ will analyze the game alongside play-by-play -play veteran Jim Leahy. You can catch the game on Saturday live on pay-per-view, or you can wait for the rebroadcast right here on K5, the home team, Sunday at 10 a.m. And remember those 10 local players who play for Weaver State now? Well, today the team arriving in the islands and their first stop after landing Aloha Stadium. The team planned to hold a three-hour afternoon practice session before heading to the North Shore. And while it was a welcome home for some, it was culture shock for others. The spam, man. Back home, that's different. It's not. We don't cook up the spam like that and eat it like that. But it's fun to see the new culture. That was money. <laughs> Just that's exactly what I was craving for on the plane. I was like, man, I hope we have zippies for lunch. First of all, you don't want to stay downtown because there's too much distraction. We stay on the North Shore where it's quiet. We're just here for business, not really a vacation. You know, we got to take care of business first before we play. 